Today is February 8th, 1998. We're with Mr. Jacob Ehrlich, and this is tape two. Please continue. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Dad uh, came home, and then I really noticed the commotion in the house uh, because the situation was... I, I heard him speaking with my mother. He was very worried. Uh, what are we going to do? What's going to happen to us when the Germans uh, come to Sarajevo? Uh, nobody knew. Nobody knew of the horrors. All we expected, you know, uh, we never, I as a child, and even my father, never went through a war, really, and we didn't just know the, what the uh, actual, um, what occupation by enemy means. No one expected, no one suspected the horrors which were to occur later on. Um, that's probably the reason why so many in my family uh, they were just being led away to the slaughterhouse. They didn't want to run away when my, pa when my father gathered all the family and warned them that we should be careful and maybe leave. Do you remember your father gathering the family around? Yes, I do. Tell me about yes, that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All the relatives were together, and my father told them exactly what their Muslim friends, what, they, what his Muslim friends warned him about. Uh, he told them that he was ridiculed. He was, he said, uh, my father said, uh, you know, uh, so what? Uh, what can they do? Uh, I mean, uh, the, the the relatives said, "What can they do to us?" So we'll go and pay, peel potatoes. We'll, we will uh, uh, do some menial work, and uh, then they're gonna let us go. And and you know, nobody really. And it's true. It didn't just happen in in Sarajevo. It it, it happened. It happened all over, all in, uh, in, the other, in other countries, in Poland and in, in Czechoslovakia and in, in Hungary and anywhere where the Jews lived. I doubt very much that anyone could have suspected such horrors. Uh, so um, some of my family did, did listen, and that's why uh, some of the family which escaped later on uh, went to Israel, and that's what saved us. But uh, some really outright laughed that said, oh, why well, you too dramatic, uh, you know, and so forth. It's very sad. A decision like that, just, you know, I lost 14 cousins because of that. How could you tell if you were, if now someone was to warn you that you should leave your home, would you, would you, you know? That's, you have to put yourself in, in that, uh, in that situation and to understand. And many times I feel, my God, how could we have allowed like what happened, what we learned, what happened later on in Sarajevo, where people stayed at their home, they would, uh, here's, I'll tell you, uh, when I came back in 1966, and I spoke with some of the neighbors there, the Muslims, they said they were banging, their, she was telling me the following, they were banging at your door. Uh, at, at your door Who was at, banging? Uh, the, uh, the, the, the Nazis, the Croatians, the, the Ustashe, which, which was the, uh, the, the uh, German collaborators, they were Yugoslavian. They did more harm. They were truly beasts, these people, the Croatians, the collaborators, these people who wanted to prove to the Germans they can do a better, better job than the, than the Germans. They banged at the door and, and then when no one answered and when they were told that, that we had left, uh, oh, we'll catch him, we'll, 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 we'll catch them. And uh, they were not successful, thank God. But uh, they did go from door to door. And as we know, uh, the other people that were, that were home, they were taken out of their home, whatever, the way they were. They couldn't carry anything with them. They just put them in a bus or a truck, whatever they had there. Uh, they were taken to concentration camps. Never heard of. Women, children, no pity. No pity. I understand that somewhere, 
some parts they were put into uh, trucks they already had they were gassed in while they were in the in the truck in closed vans that's I dread to think about it who told you that I read that how they used to how they would how they would make it easier for the victims you know not to um, I, I read it it was um uh, it was described by some people who got that information from the Nazis from the Nazis where they were put into the van with and gassed in the vans never had a chance I'd like to go back um, to the time that your father had decided to leave what did you what did you think at that point my parents told me that we were going to go away and um, instinctively um, one could feel that that fear of uh, of being caught the way, uh, if you'd like me to describe how we escaped from Sarajevo, this is um, miraculous. I remember um, that I was dressed as a little Muslim boy, where I had a, a little um, a little fez, which is a red a red hat on my head. Um, my sister was dressed like a little Muslim girl and we were accompanied by uh, a, a friend of my of my parents uh, they were Muslims we went to the uh, railroad station it was night um, it was a very small station and it was a very small town it was patrolled and um, by the Ustashe or police or collaborators and they were very everyone was very very uh, rigorously screened who was going to board the train but because uh, my uh, uh, the woman that accompanied us was she had a, at that time they had a veil uh, and at that time they uh, no no one dared to, to lift the, the, the veil to see who that is you know it could have as well been my mother, but uh, uh, we didn't want to take that chance. Um, she was asked where we were going, and she said we were going to to Mostar, where um, it was a, a it was a city occupied by the uh, Italians. Italians were, of course, um, Germans uh, uh, Ger uh, Germany's ally, and uh, at that time, uh, Italy occupied certain cities in Yugoslavia. And it was under uh, under their uh, jurisdiction. The Croats didn't have much to say there. Later on, they did. So uh, I remember boarding the train, and in about two and a half to three hours, we were in Mostar. Uh, we were left at the house of their relatives, and um, um, this was actually the first stage of our escape. My mother. I'd just like to get yes. a, a little clarification yes. point. Um, at that point, weren't you still in Sarajevo? We left Sarajevo. Sarajevo and the, the station way I described. Was that a small station? Small railroad station, yes. Okay. That's the way we escaped. The plan was to leave in three stages, as you asked me. Uh, so um, the first stage was the children was my my sister and I left what I want what did your parents tell you mm -hmm. when you were being dressed as a Muslim okay. uh, there wasn't much warning there wasn't much talk we, my father told me not to speak not to speak and maybe that's the best thing 
because um, yes, chances were chances were that that uh, someone would ask me something, but nobody did ask us uh, anything. This was actually the very beginning, and maybe they became a little stricter later on. But um, this, my parents just want us to do exactly what what our friend, that's friend the, our, our accompanying friend, would tell us to do, and uh, we just kept very quiet at that time. It was not much. Uh, <laughs> the children are very obedient, <laughs> you know. So. Um, I'd like to also just clarify one other point before mm -hmm. we continue. Um, at that point, who was in charge in Sarajevo, administration-wise? The administration was um, the Germans. Uh, you couldn't see too many Germans in the street. Occasionally, a military, you know, patrol car, or truck. Uh, we didn't really want to venture too much outside, but um, it's the um, the Croatian collaborators. That's who it was. They were in charge. Yes. Do you remember seeing a Croatian collaborator or a German? Yes. What, yes, I do. What kinds of? What do they look like? They had a greenish. They had a. a, a, a Who, which one is the the, uh, the, the Croats? The Croats. Uh, they wanted to assimilate very much the Germans. They uh, uh, they had like a a, a, a greenish um, um, color uniform, or, or with um, the hats were like a like a V. Uh, so I remember, and they had. They had an insignia on on that hat. Um, that's more or less how I describe them. And boots, yes. Well, frightening sight. Did you ever have the occasion to speak to any of these? No, no. Did you ever hear them speaking to someone else? One would see them from a distance, not that I remember ever uh, them. It would have been too late <laughs> had, they spoken to, had they spoken to my parents, you know. This was, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, most of the people uh, that were caught at home was because how, the, how did the Nazis know where the Jews lived? Of course, they had a list of uh, they go, if they went to the uh, uh, to the authorities, they could see who lives where, but and associated by the names. But they would ask, "Where do the Jews live?" And some people who were <laughs> who didn't like us very much would just point. He lives here. He lives there. You know, that's they made the life very. They they make it so easy on us on on us being picked up. While you were in Sarajevo, did you see any of that happening? No, I was very little. I, 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 I could not possibly have, you know. And then again, I must say that we left at a very early stage, so probably that's something that occurred later on. You mm. see, it didn't give us much chance. Mm. Th thank you for that clarification. Um, please continue. Um, you were going to Mostar? Yes. My mother, in turn, was accompanied by a Muslim as his wife. She was fully dressed as a um, Turkish long dress and the veil, and no one suspected anything. She came without any problem uh, to Mostar the following day, and of course we were very happy to see her. We stayed uh, with our hosts, which were very wonderful people. Um, you know, they say in look, reading back in history that uh, the Muslims were very friendly to Jewish people, and they welcomed us uh, in their into their world. In other words, when during Inquisition and when the when the Jews escaped escaped Spain, uh, they were very welcome in Bulgaria and Turkey, and, and, and consequently there was assimilation and. Um, uh, I, I really feel, uh, because of the war, because they were really like 
victims again uh, of what we were victims of, you know. In a way, uh, unfortunately, uh, millions of people die because of their conviction as religion. I believe that the Christians died because they were pointed out as being bad people, as Christians, that, that the Jews were persecuted because they were Jews, and, uh, and the Serbs and the, and the Orthodox were persecuted. Uh, and, and again, the war in Yugoslavia now happened because of the Muslims wanted to institute a, a Muslim state. So, uh, religion is a wonderful thing, but it sometimes can be double-edged, and unfortunately, the victims are the people. Um, getting back to what I was saying about my parents, um, my father was the last person to, to escape. Uh, everybody knew each other. I mean, this was a city that was only about 70,000 uh, inhabitants at that time. Population was 70,000. Are you referring to Sarajevo, Sarajevo or Mosta? Sar Sarajevo. When my father left, he went, he was sitting in the train with, as, a, as a soccer player, uh, and they may believe they all they had a good time on the train, just throwing the ball around and um, uh, fooling around, you know. When the, my father tells me that, when the inspec inspector came, actually there was... Uh, Croatian, you know, inspectors, and to check on the passengers. Uh, it says I lay back, I put my head like this down, and if, as if I was dozing off, and they were throwing the ball, and uh, they they counted us, you know, and uh, and uh, that the fellow, they got the person there said it's okay, it's all right. Uh, it, they were all Muslim players, they're all Muslim. This was a Muslim soccer team, which by some miracle were traveling that day to Mostar. And my father was, that's how he escaped. When my father came, that I remembered late, 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 it was maybe about two, three o'clock in the morning, my mother, he says, look who is here. And uh, my father embraced me. And that was a nice reunion. Now the family was all, you know, together. So that was Mostar for the next uh, two months or so. We knew that we were not safe because we knew that in Mostar would soon be taken over by the, by the Croatians. What kinds of conversations do you remember having with your sister at this time? With my sister? Mm -hmm. uh, very little. Uh, everything was, you know, we were not in our surrounding. Everything was new to us, you know. The home was um, was a strange home, you know. It was a little room, typically furnished with a divan, which is, would be like a sofa, you know. And they made us stay very pleasant. But uh, I remember um, going outside. We, we really didn't want to, to, to call any attention. My parents always say, you better stay inside. We don't want anybody to see you outside. So I don't remember going out very much, you know. So um, later on, I remember we, we left um, our Muslim friends. Uh, it, we didn't want it to be too suspicious. <clears throat> and then we were moved into um, another house with, some, um, with another family, and they were not Turkish. They were, they were not Muslim. They were, uh, they were uh, Orthodox, you know, Christian Orthodox. Do you remember the names of these people, of the Muslims and of the no, Christian Orthodox? No, people? no. Uh, strangely, you're asking me this, but my parents used to have uh, used to have a picture which was lost somewhere, you know, of their children, which was a, a beautiful photograph, you know. So we all these people. When my parents died, I don't know what happened to that, but I, I don't remember there, but visually, I remember what these people looked like, you know, and I tried to look them up when I went back in 1966. I, we went exactly back to the places where I remember being hidden and so forth, and I was showing my wife, we stayed here, we stayed there. It was like retracing our steps at that time. Yeah. Yes, uh, the name was Branco. Who's comes name? to me. That was their their son, 
It was a young, young, young boy, good-looking boy. I don't know what happened to them after the Croatian took over Mostar. You see, because the um, they were as well, they were as persecuted as as the Jews. And I don't know how that person, uh, if whether they survived or not. Yeah. So um, uh, Mostar was like three months, two to three months, no more, and then. Uh, Another an, a, a, another odyssey began. Now we were supposed to leave Mostar and go to Split. Split was another city which Italians were kind of more established. And again, we had to board the bus and go through enemy lines. Again, we made a stop was about a five hour trip. I remember so well, we got off at this place, it was like an inn, where we had something to eat. And we were sitting at the, at the table, and the whole, the whole row of, it was all Ustasha, it was all um, soldiers, are uh, really, you know, an overpowering thing. Uh, that you know you're being there, you're sitting there, you're being truly as a as a child there. I felt I felt the fear that we can, we can you know we'll be caught. My father was sitting at a different table, didn't want us, and I, my sister and I were with my mother. And we had something to eat, and my father said, I noticed, you know, that they were either watching me, you know, so he made believe he spilled the soup over him, and he went to the bathroom and immediately called us and we kind of went back to the bus and luckily you know uh, the, the bus continued on and we came to split what did your father tell you uh, my father told me he was very very scared that, that uh, for one moment he thought that uh, you know it's going to be picked up and that's uh, uh, the terrible fear of being caught you know, and leaving your family behind and everything. This is what went through your head through these moves? What did you think about why you were being caught? In danger of being caught? Very, it's a very, very good question. It really never occurred to me, say, how did I feel? You feel, uh, it's like self-preservation, you know? It is something that makes you more aware of things, what happens around you. You become um, very protective and you just try to hide so nobody will see you. Fear, just fear. Uh, of being caught. For what? <laughs> I don't know for what, because I never did anything, you know. I'm saying, you know, I guess just a, a intuition that something bad will come to you if you're caught. Yeah. We arrived in uh, Split. We were in a, <clears throat> we put in a little room, slept on the floor. That same night, at one o'clock in the morning, somebody was banging very strongly on the door. And the door is pushed open. And, um, uh, we saw the Italian uh, fascists, uh, they were called black shirts. Uh, some of them were brutal, but in, in our case, they're very human. And when they asked, who are these people? One of the, there were about three or four of them, I remember that. And I, I woke up and I looked at the door, and they were tall, and uh, they spoke in Italian. Chi sono questi qua? Meaning, who are these people? And um, <clears throat> they said, oh, they are, uh, sono ebrei, they are Jews. And uh, he looked, you know, at us uh, on the floor down. And he, was, he said, uh, lascia li stare, leave him alone, poor Jews. Closed the door and left. So, uh, that was one incident I remember. Those people, I really, you know, so they say fascists, but Italians were also 
very instrumental in our in saving our lives and many many others like 1500 Jews that we know of um, after split where we stayed about two months again the Italians were very protective and I learned later on that it was um, it had to do with with uh, uh, with Mussolini's son-in-law uh, who was Count Siano Count Siano uh, gave orders that the Jews be uh, saved to be protected uh, we were taken into a concentration camp Italian concentration camp in um, at that time it was in in Kraljevica which was uh, Porto Porto Re in Italian it was also Yugoslavian territory occupied by Italians and um, again we were put there with uh, uh, about 600 Jews that were um, was barbed wire, uh, very little food. The men were in a separate area. The men were in um, uh, children and, and the kids were in different barracks. Uh, we slept on you know, wooden beds. There are two stories like this, like the one you see it in, in concentration camps, you know, typical, you know, like double, uh, double beds, but upwards. And um, we were hungry, we didn't have much to eat. But no one was, uh, no harm was done to us. The Italians were very, very good. I remember uh, visiting <laughs> my father, you didn't have to ask any permission or anything, you just, you know, it was it was a large camp, so we would walk over, and I remember sometimes asking my father, do you have any food? <laughs> my father, was, he later on told me, you know, many times I would go hungry just to leave you something for you to eat. You know, he would save some food. Um, but we were grateful to them because they didn't harm us. What language did you speak? Uh, Yugoslavian. But I was starting to learn Italian. Um, I must tell you how human they were that uh, I spoke with an Italian uh, soldier, you know, sometimes by hands and he spoke a few words, you know, so he would, he would let me know, he says, tonight, he says, you see this, this rock there? It's, uh, I believe food. And he would leave me. He left food. Wrapped up or it was in one of the cans, you know. He, he would leave me. He would leave food. Very human, isn't it? I did learn. <laughs> at that time, I guess, just uh, my, my musical career must have started at that time. Because <laughs> there was a song called Mama, which is very known. I learned that song, Mama. And uh, it was during, um, I think it was Christmas, or the Italians celebrated, you know, it was Christmas time. We're going to have to take a break, but we'll continue. Sure. <laughs>